Hey everybody, Jamie Lee here with Bird Tricks and today I'm going to be talking about baby birds and how their diet is different from adult birds. Are you done? <laughs> Shaking the whole porch. They're shaking the whole porch. You look like you can go somewhere. You can melt. Melt. Baby melt. Baby melt. <laughs> Love you. Love your fluffy face when you make it all fluffy. <laughs> Are you ready? Ready to film the first video? Perfect. Okay guys, hello, this is Jamie from <laughs> Bird Tricks and Halo. Halo is a red dominant Camelot macaw baby. He's just a baby. He looks big, but he's a baby. Can you tell by his baby face? Oh, his baby wings, his baby beak. Yeah, his baby noises. Um, and Halo is with me today to talk about a very important topic that's not always that fun to talk about, but I think it's gonna save the lives of a lot of birds. So let's get to it. All right, so first off, I wanna talk about how if you don't have experience hand feeding baby birds, weaning baby birds, or just raising baby birds, you shouldn't be buying a full on baby bird. Now, disclaimer, Halo's actually not mine, but I do get paid to hang out with you and train you, which is a really fun part of my job. Um, However, I just want to point out, just as a disclaimer and just as a uh, really to emphasize that if you don't have experience with those things, you shouldn't be taking that on for the first time. Um, if you do buy a baby bird though, please make sure that you have direct access to the breeder that you get your bird from um, or some sort of help that you can get from somebody who has experience hand feeding, weaning, just overall with baby birds because although it's not rocket science for how to do those things, so many things can go terribly wrong and these guys are really really fragile so it gets scary when you're talking about possibly losing a baby bird just due to one accident in the process. I do want to point out that here at Bird Tricks, we are not breeders. Uh, we are not baby bird experts. We don't specialize in baby birds. We don't raise baby birds. We don't breed birds, um, anything like that. So just a quick disclaimer on that. There, We are not specializing in the baby bird. Uh, niche. However, I do have a weaning download available on my website. It is free. It talks about how to wean. Now this should not be a substitution for having direct help or having some sort of direct line to somebody who can walk you through what that process should look like with a baby bird. Um, but it is there as a free resource to the avian community to be able to help because it's something that I get asked about a lot and I wanted there to be instant information out there available to the masses. So it is over there at birdtricks.com under my freebies category. Just a word of advice, if your breeder is not willing to help you through the weaning process with your baby bird, do not buy a bird from that breeder. They should want to see you through, want to be there as a valuable resource and helpful <laughs> to you um, for this. Ah! <laughs> and baby birds are fledging birds, so they're learning how to use their wings and they do this a lot. <laughs> You are going to eventually go forward and up.
lot better. <laughs> Uh, we're in the fledging process, which I'll probably talk to talk about a little bit later because this is what it looks uh, like. It is what it looks like. It's what you're doing. And uh, if he gets too discontent, I'm going to put him next to me on a foraging tree. So you get a little bit more energy uh, out. Really flap up there. Got to take you flying today. Go go flying today. Do an easy one. Good boy. Good job. Good job, good job. Okay, so here's the big message that I wanted this video to talk about. Um, one, I think it's awesome that great information is getting out there about bird diets. You want to come over here? Um, just about understanding this, these guys' health, overall health, their nutritional needs, um, and how to meet them, and offering them the best diet possible. However, the nutritional needs and the diet of baby birds really differs from that of adult birds who are eating on their own. Now I'm going to use the terminology weaned and what weaned means is a bird who is weaned onto foods where it can eat by itself and it is feeding itself. It's no longer taking a hand feeding formula. Um, so that's the difference between a weaned bird who's eating on its own and an unweaned bird who still requires formula. And Halo here still requires two hand feedings a day. So although he is eating on his own a bit, um, he eats two meals on his own per day, he also still needs two hand feeding formula uh, meals per day as well to go along with that because he is a growing big 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 boy um, and that can go on for a very long time especially in macaws they can be hand feeding for up to a year um, sometimes longer I've heard a, an array of different stories it really just goes on the speed of the bird and how willing that bird is in wanting to eat the foods that are provided so unfortunately what we're seeing right now in the avian community is that there's a lot of force weaning going on which means making a baby or a young bird eat on its own before it naturally would or naturally felt ready this can be done by just taking the hand feeding formula away and not offering it and making the bird eat what's there uh, a lot of the times when this is done this is done on weaning the bird onto unhealthy foods because that's what they just <laughs> will wean faster onto um, and it's a really horrible like sad practice because usually when birds transition to a new home from a breeder they will often revert back and require maybe a hand feeding or two especially Especially if they were force weaned and they never wanted to let go of that hand feeding in the first place and if this happens and you have no experience with it and you start trying to put that baby bird on a really healthy diet and kind of a strict schedule um, it can really backfire and end up starving the bird basically um, so it's a really scary territory to get in and it's something that I felt like I needed to address because I think there's a lack of understanding of how and how much you feed a baby bird or a weaning bird versus how and how much you feed an adult bird. So the number one thing I recommend when you get a baby bird or have any bird honestly, but especially a baby bird who is weaning, growing, changing, um, you want to get a scale. Um, and this is where you can weigh your bird on a birdie scale. You see an airplane? Jet, an airplane? Good job, you handled that like a champ. Good job. Um, so you wanna get yourself a scale so that you can weigh your bird. Now, what I do with Halo is I actually weigh him in the morning and I get his uh, empty weight, so, so, so to speak. So he's gone 12 hours sleeping. Um, he wakes up and I get his empty weight and then we feed him or we fly him or we do both and I get his full weight as well because I want to see how much he's eating. Now in this fledging slash weaning stage it really fluctuates because when they are just hand feeding they might weigh more to bit, um, compared to when they start fledging which means they start flying. Uh, now they're finally burning off some of that energy and they might be eating more or they might be starting to wean and eat a little less. It's just kind of this mixture and you wanna make sure they're maintaining their mass and their weight and staying strong all right here, all here. You're so cute. <laughs> Um, but you need to be really really mindful and watch that weight so that you do not see a weight drop during that stage because that's what can be really scary for these guys. So I do want to emphasize that owning a scale is a life or death investment when you have a baby bird and you're doing any sort of hand feeding, weaning, diet transition, anything. You got a baby bird, you need to have a scale so you can keep track. You going somewhere? Don't go somewhere. You can fly to the side. You just can't fly too far forward. There's a screen right there. Okay. Oh my 
going to go out. Why did it go? Mm, okay, seriously. Back to the video. Oh my gosh, you just melted into the birch. You melted. Baby bird melted. Just a puddle of feathers. <laughs> so cute. Oh. So I do want to mention that I do sell or offer a scale on my website. We've had a really hard time keeping them in stock from the supplier. I love the brand and I love the type of scale. Um, sometimes you can find some on Amazon. Just be really, really uh, aware that you need a gram scale. Birds should be weighed in grams. Um, so if you're looking for one, I know a lot of people kind of jimmy rig their own. Just be really mindful that your bird does not fall off the scale. <laughs> um, so if you're a DIYer, just please do it in a way that ensures that your bird doesn't land on it or step onto it and it topples over. So just be careful, guys. Okay, so the other point that I want to draw with this is that baby birds need f access to good food pretty much all the time as they're growing and evolving. Um, whereas adult birds, as you've heard, you heard me mention in a lot of videos, we do two meals a day. Um, you do not want to take a baby bird who's maybe getting six feedings a day and just take them right down to two. Uh, it's, it's incredibly dangerous. So the big emphasis here is just that baby birds require a lot more access to the good foods than adult birds do. The other thing is that sometimes transitioning baby birds to new foods can be really easy. Um, Halo took to pellets right away, but then as he got more and more inclined to try fresh food, he became less inclined to try pellets, and so it's something that I've actually worked into an all-rounded meal where I give him the fresh food and the pellets all mixed together, and he tends to really, really like that. So there's just a lot of learning process and a lot of um, experimentation when you're trying to get a baby bird to try new foods and you want to make sure that some of it is getting in them and they're not just playing with it all the time so that is where the scale comes in handy they may act like a baby and act hungry all the time um, and you need to be able to tell the difference between when they're full they're still asking for food and they shouldn't have any more hand feeding or um, when they haven't quite had enough so one thing I will say is baby birds, you don't want to ever expect them to transition to a healthy diet in a single day. It is something that I've been able to do with adult birds, but I don't want that to be misleading for baby birds. Halo here, I think, if, how long have you been here? A few weeks. Um, I think I've had him here for a couple weeks now, and he is still... He is still hand feeding, like I said, he's on two hand feedings a day, and then he's on two um, other meals a day, which I can't keep in his cage all the time just because it does involve fresh food, so it needs to come out before it gets bad. Um, however, he does have access to pellets all the time, so it just looks a little bit different for a baby bird, and we're constantly experimenting with, hey, do you like raw broccoli, or do you like things a little bit warm? Baby birds tend to like things that, um, kind of simulate their hand feeding formula. So they may like things that are warmer and mushier and softer, whereas with adult birds, you would think, oh, that's gonna trigger hormones. I'm not gonna go there with an adult bird, but with a baby bird, it may be necessary to have success with your transition. So the big thing I wanna emphasize with baby birds and anytime you're trying to do a diet transition, say your breeder weaned your baby bird onto an all seed diet, which is very, very common. You can't just bring your baby bird home and say this is the new food that you get and expect them to make that transition again in one day. Um, if you notice a de decrease in your baby bird's weight, you need to stop and go back to what it was eating and what was working and diet conversion needs to go a lot slower for the baby birds. Um, the scale will tell you how fast or how slow to take it. You want to make sure that your bird's maintaining its weight. So um, you don't want a weight loss with a baby bird. It can be detrimental. So I know I was talking about <laughs> warming up the food for baby birds. Make sure that you're not serving anything ever too hot. Things should be room temperature or cooler. Um, but that warmer, softer texture or consistency of food was really appealing to baby birds because they, they did hand feed recently. So it can work really well to steam your veggies and then let them cool down a bit uh, before feeding. But having that texture, that really soft, moist texture works great for babies. And then you can slowly work your way over to being able to feed and serve foods raw. But don't expect to be able to do the ultimate ideal diet right out of the gate. Um, with that said, though I don't want you guys to think that baby birds may not like any cold foods because Halo one day was completely into my seasonal feeding system 
but it has changed day to day and I never know what to expect. Sometimes he takes to it great when it's just barely cool um, and other times it needs to be mixed in with warm stuff to just make it more appealing and more like hand feeding. Okay, so a lot of people ask how do we train baby birds with treats because they're still hand feeding, they're weaning, they're just newly weaned. Um, that stuff will come. So just enjoy your time with your baby bird, play with them, um, interact with them, just work on your bond with them, love them. Uh, training and treats, that stuff will come. I promise you these birds are are pretty much engineered to love nuts and treats so that part will not be a struggle later on. Um, but give it time, you know, make sure that you're prioritizing just enjoying your baby bird because they don't stay babies forever. They don't. Keep in mind too, your baby bird may not be interested in taking any sort of treat food until after it's completely and fully weaned. Um, treats are something that we do offer after the weaning process and we just kind of see if the bird has any interest or if they get their beak on them a little bit earlier, they might want to play with some of the nuts or some of the seeds and if they do take a liking for them, you can definitely use them. I found personally though, that taking it really slow, weaning them onto the proper diet the right way in a really slow, consistent way, and then introducing treats once your bird is fully weaned is kind of an easier task because then they're not trying to wean themselves onto that treat food. Oh, you scooted way closer to me. That makes me feel nice. You want to be close? So I would say my general recommendation is just having access to your breeder and an avian veterinarian nearby if you're working with a baby bird, weaning a baby bird, hand feeding a baby bird, any of that kind of stuff, just so that you have direct access to help if something goes down. Because when things start to go downhill for baby birds, it is it is just gonna happen real quick. Um, so that's again why I want you guys to get a scale, make sure that you're watching that scale, make sure that you're ensuring that they aren't losing weight. And if they are, if you're worried, if you see that look in their eyes or you just have that gut feeling that something's wrong and they're just not acting right, please act on that. Take them to get help because birds, it's not so, well, once it's obvious, it's usually too late, which is really, really scary. But you know, those of you that have had birds in a for a long time there's like a look in their eye where their eye gets kind of like gla glassy eyed where it's you know glossy over it and it just they have a look in their eye where it looks like they're in pain if you guys have ever seen a sick bird where that's the only symptom that you get um i've seen that look and anything like that rush to a vet. Uh, I want I want to make sure that you guys have those resources available to you to do something about it. Most veterinarians are completely comfortable uh, hand feeding and can take that process over for you or you know do all the things that need to be done that you may be uncomfortable doing um, and hopefully you have a really good breeder keeping in touch with you to, to help you through the process as well but ideally you're not getting an unweaned baby bird. So you guys may be wondering like why I'm so ah about this and one of my free flight students actually had a baby galah who was force weaned from the breeder and when the galah came to her it wanted hand feeding formula. It was regressing back even more so and this flight student of mine had no idea how to hand feed. She'd never done it before. So we pushed her to go to an avian vet and get a crash course in how to hand feed a baby bird from a professional because the breeder was really pushy about her taking this bird sooner than later based on whatever was going on in their lives. Um, but it's just not okay. Don't ever feel pressured into something that you're uncomfortable or not confident enough with. I know for me personally, um, I was offered to take a baby bird that barely had any feathers and raise it for somebody and I said no way <laughs> absolutely not it's way too young if anything went wrong it, like that young there's just no I don't have the experience I'm not a professional breeder I'm not a prof professional hand feeding baby person <laughs> uh, none of that so training is completely different than you get to the medical sides of hand feeding and things like that and you can deal with crop burn where you are hand feeding the formula that is too hot and it's actually burning the inside of the crop you can deal with crop rot where you're feeding formula that's too cold and it's not able to digest um, there's just a lot of things that can go wrong with the hand feeding process and the weaning process and 
it's a it can be an intimidating road so I just want to make sure that those of you that are either getting into it thinking about getting into it have considered it or have even have an experience that you'd like to share in the comments I'm really interested to hear them um, make sure that you're telling other people what happened like why did you find yourself in that situation look at you being brave what was that oh good job um, but sharing our experiences and not feeling shamed for them or embarrassed by sharing them is only going to help the community be stronger. We need to make it feel like we're there for one another and sharing those experiences will help others get through their experiences. And if they're having uh, something where somebody's on the fence, literally right now watching this video, you're on the fence about whether or not you should get a baby bird from a specific breeder and the information in this has you going, oh, that was a red flag or that was a red flag or I'm not ready for this or I don't want to be responsible for a baby bird dying in my hands. Um, you know, please make an educated decision, talk to others, and uh, make sure that you have the resources to see you all the way through um, your baby with success. What do you think? Anything you want to add? Did I forget anything? Did I forget anything? Make sure you love your baby. Did I say that? Make sure you love your baby. Love them. Don't forget to love them. I love them so much. Mm, mm, mm. Melt them into the perches. <laughs> hey everybody, thank you for watching this video of me and Halo the Camelot Macaw. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and make sure to share it with bird lovers alike that you think could benefit from the information in this video. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notification bell. All right, I just wanna point out the birds were so good out here. We had Halo, of course, who was good through the whole video. And we have Blueberry and Beam, who were super good too. Thanks guys, you guys are perfect. Super perfect. Blueberry, you're adorable. Oops. And you're super cute. Super cute.